Let's go through an orthopedic examination of the elbow, starting out with inspection. So Lindsay, if you could stand over here, please. First off, we're going to look at, oh, uh, maybe up towards the, uh, yeah, that's perfect. Maybe turn this way a bit. Okay. And I want you to stand with your palms facing forward. Yeah. And just kind of at your side like that. So starting off, we're going to inspect from an anterior view. What we're looking for is any asymmetry. We're looking for scars, swelling, any skin changes such as erythema. We're going to observe both sides and we're also noting the carrying angle, which is the angle away from the body of the elbow here. We're looking at the uh, genu valgus. Now that should be somewhere between five and 15 degrees and it's an important angle and actually functionally it'll help your arms clear your hips as you're moving, especially during walking, for example. So once we've looked at the anterior, we're gonna have Lindsay face this way a bit. We're gonna look from the lateral side. And this time just relax your arms at your side there, palms forward. What we're looking for again is any swelling, any scars, any visible atrophy or deformities. We'd also be observing to see if there's some type of flexion deformity. If there had been a previous injury, for example, and Lindsay wasn't able to completely extend her elbow, we might see that it's slightly flexed. Okay, and relax. So we would do both sides. For the purpose of this video, we're only seeing the left side. Now turn your back towards me. Okay, and so from the posterior view, we're looking at the elbows. Uh, from here, we can actually see the olecranon process and the fossa much better. We'd look for edema, especially in these regions here. Once again, also looking for muscle asymmetries or atrophy, any skin changes, any swelling. So that is a visual inspection of the elbow from three views. Now, one more thing that I'd like to add here is when observing the elbows, especially from the posterior view here, you should also look for any rheumatoid nodules. In about 20% of patients suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, you'll notice uh, bumps, uh, almost like lumps, underneath the surface of the skin, which are very specific to RA. And it usually will occur at the joints such as the elbow or the fingers that are prone to trauma because they're exposed joints. Another thing to look for would be psoriatic plaques. Now, psoriasis is something that uh, medically, if you look at studies, it could be an indication of serious underlying diseases such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, syndrome X, autoimmune conditions, uh, even obesity. So something to really pay attention to are those changes when looking at the elbows. Now that we've completed inspection, we're moving on to palpation. So first off, we're gonna check temperature of both sides using the backs of our hands. We're gonna check the temperature front and back of the elbow, and then compare the two sides to see if perhaps one side is warmer than the other side, which could be an indication of some inflammation or a condition going on. Having done that, we're gonna move into palpation of the key structures of the elbow. I'm gonna use the right arm. In an examination, you would be checking the structures on both sides. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to focus on the lateral structures using uh, this arm, and I'll probably move to the other arm for some of the other structures. So first off, we've got the lateral epicondyle here of the humerus. So we're going to palpate that. Moving a little distally, we get onto the radial head here, and we're going to create supination and pronation as we feel the radial head moving there. The lateral epicondyle here is actually the origin of the common extensor tendon. So if this is tender upon palpation, it could be an uh, indicative of a tendinopathy. Now we're going to move to the opposite arm here. So now you can see the medial structures. So we're going to palpate the medial epicondyle of the humerus here. This is also the origin of the common flexor tendon. So if it is tender upon palpation, it could be indicative of tendinopathy. We're going to look at the olecranon process right here, the tip of the elbow, so to speak, and dropping just behind it, we've got the fossa. So we're gonna palpate in here, the olecranon fossa. I'm gonna stand over here for a sec. So just medial and behind uh, of the uh, uh, medial of the condyle here of the humerus, if you just let your fingers slide back and sink into the groove here, Here's where you'll palpate the ulnar nerve. And as I do this, I can just feel that nerve as it runs back and forth across my fingers. Okay. Now, another thing to do is extend the elbow fully. And here we can actually palpate the triceps tendon. So you can feel that and just kind of follow it up into the muscle bulk here. 
Okay, and then in order to palpate the biceps, the distal biceps tendon, it's best to have that elbow flexed to almost 90 degrees. You can see it pop out right here on Lindsay. So you wanna get in there and, and palpate that distal biceps tendon. And a great way to test this is to uh, do it during forced or resisted supination. So I'm gonna hold your hand here, Lindsay. And what I want you to do is try to bring your palm up this way, but I'm going to resist that motion, okay? Yeah, so there she goes. You can just see it right here as it pops up. And you can palpate it in its length from side to side. There we go, good. Okay, so that is a basic palpation of the elbow joint. Now to test active range of motion, it's best to observe both sides at the same time. That way you can see if there's any asymmetries or limitations due to past injury or perhaps an arthritic condition. So starting out, we're gonna have the patient uh, stand facing you. And I want you to bring both arms out to your side, uh, Lindsay, palms facing up and arms straight. Now, bend the elbows, uh, bringing the hands to your shoulders as far as you can. And as we can see, uh, Lindsay's got full range of motion. A normal range of flexion would be about 145 degrees of elbow flexion. Now straighten both arms at the elbow. Perfect. So here it's great to observe both sides. If there had been an injury, for example, on the right side, perhaps uh, the arm wouldn't come down as far, or it could be hypermobile and actually extend past the normal range. So a normal extension range in the elbow should be about zero degrees. Now bring your arms to your sides, okay? I want you to uh, bend the elbows to 90 degrees, palms up. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is pronation. And that should be about from zero all the way to 85 degrees is what we wanna see here. So let's see, pronate both sides. Perfect. And now from this position, we're gonna go the opposite way, palms up at the end, and that would be supination, which should be around 90 degrees. Okay, and go. Perfect. Okay, and relax. So that is a basic active range of motion. Now, one thing you'd like to do at the end is some passive range of motion, just to see if there's any joint uh, crepitus or limitations or, or pain. So an example of that would be bending the elbow passively as far as we could, extending, and then you can hold the patient's hand and create some pronation and supination. So you'd wanna do that on both sides. Now let's go through some basic elbow orthopedic tests. First off, we're gonna have the patient uh, bend the elbow slightly to almost 90 degrees. And what I want you to do on this one, Lindsay, is you're gonna make just a, a fist. You're going to move your wrist into flexion. So can you do that for me? Perfect, okay. Now go back to neutral here. As you do that, you're gonna find resistance and that's gonna be my hand basically stopping you from doing that, okay? So I'm going to palpate at the medial aspect of the elbow here at the same time and stabilize it. Okay, so now flex the wrist. So as I'm resisting this flexion, if there were pain along the medial aspect of the elbow, that would be an indication that there could be a common flexor tendinopathy. Now, in order to test the lateral aspect of the elbow, specifically to see if there's a common extensor tendon ten tendinopathy, we're going to have the patient bend the elbow to roughly 90 degrees, pronate slightly. I want you to make a fist, keeping this nice and neutral. Now, can you extend your wrist? So bringing it back, perfect, okay. So now come back to neutral. Now, same idea, I'm going to resist while you actively extend the wrist, okay? So extend. At the same time, I'm stabilizing the elbow and palpating along the lateral aspect. If it were tendon along here where the origin of the common extensor tendon is, we could suspect a tendinopathy. In order to test the collateral ligaments of the elbow, you want to perform a valgus and varus stress test on those ligaments. So having the patient in front of you, Slight bend in the elbow. Uh, I like to stabilize their arm against the side here with my arm and supporting the elbow here. So in order to create stress along the medial collateral ligaments, we're gonna push the elbow that way, which would be a valgus stress. So I'm gonna use my hands here to create that stress and then you know, interact with the patient, make sure if they're hurting, they, they let you know. Then coming back to neutral, I'm gonna go the opposite way. So now pushing with this hand and that's gonna create a varus stress on the uh, opposite collateral ligaments here. So we're gonna go that way on the lateral side of the elbow. Okay, good. Okay, so that is creating a valgus and varus stress on the medial and lateral collateral, uh, collateral ligaments of the elbow. So if there's a sprain or some type of situation, you'll be able to examine it thoroughly. 
So that concludes our orthopedic examination of the elbow. Now, in order to complete this exam thoroughly, we would combine it with an upper extremity neurological examination. And you also have to take patient history into account. A lot of people who have elbow problems may also have shoulder or wrist problems. So those are an examination that you'd want to do in conjunction with the elbow if deemed appropriate. If you'd like to check out those videos, please see our examination playlist. And thank you for watching.